Welcome back to Sports Talk ATL. I am Chase Earl, joined by Alex Ord. The Braves and the Reds clashed over the weekend in what was by far the most entertaining series. All games decided by one run. Both teams, they were very similar. You know, the Braves were down by four. They hit three homers in one inning to cut it to 11 to 10 in the eighth inning. Uh, couldn't get it done in the ninth. Ended up grounding into a double play to end the game. Then the Braves hop out to some four or five run games. The Reds in both games two and three come storming back to, to bring some drama to the light. They couldn't finish, especially in game three. They have runners on first and third with one out against Rossell Iglesias, who just hasn't been the lockdown guy he has been in the past. But he got the double play into the game. Another Braves series win. They've still yet to uh, lose a series in June. They can finish off this month right against the Twins at home and go, I get what is it? Win every series in June. Yeah, we'll just we'll just call it that. I was trying to think of the word. Win every season series in June. And listen, this team is playing as well as I've ever seen a team offensively that I think I've ever seen before. I mean, we're talking about a team that has like a 900 OPS as a team, as a team, like the league average is like 680. This team is at 900. Like as a team, this is one giant all-star. Like that's, that is what it is. It is one giant. They're hitting 300. They're hitting 298. They now lead the league in pretty much every Major offensive stat, home runs, OPS, on base percentage. I you you talk about teams that do not have holes in their lineup, and, and it's kind of overused because there's always usually at least one, right? But when your worst hitter is going to start at shortstop for the National League in the All Star Game, most likely in Orlando Arcia, and he deserves it, this is another level of beast that people are running up to. And I, and I respect the Rays and what they've been able to do this season. But I look at the Braves, and I've been saying this for the year. I'm just like, there is no when this team is clicking, when this team is clicking like this, and hopefully they continue this down the stretch, and particularly in October, right? Because that's when it really matters. But when this team is playing like this, you are not beating them. So that's why before the series, the Reds coming in with 11 game wins, uh, a win streak, and I'm like, that's cute, but they're still the Reds, and you know <laughs> they're a solid team. But like, I don't care. Like the Braves are winning this series. I was kind of mad we didn't sweep them just to make a statement, but this team when they're playing like this, cannot be beat. They cannot be beaten for an entire series. And over a seven-game series, if they were playing in October right now, you could you could put you could pencil the Braves before the playoffs even started for the World Series because they would run away with it. They are playing that good right now. Everybody's hitting. Michael Harris looks like an all-star again. Eddie Rosario is hitting. I mean, Marcelo Zuna continue his tear. He he's played like an all-star for the for the last two months now. The top of the lineup, Matt Olson. If you don't like him. I don't care. Like I, I talk about the Freddie thing. It's never an a, a anti Matt Olson thing. The guy should be an all-star. He's now leading the league in home runs. Ronald Acuna keeps doing his thing. Ozzy Albies is close to 20 homers. He's on pace for 40. I mean, this and Austin Riley had a big series. It, I, it's enjoy it, man. Cause it's like this, like I said, this is the fun stuff. Like this is the fun part. You get to watch this every day, man. These, this is the best team I've ever seen. This is the best team I've ever seen the Braves put together and the only teams I can even think of in my lifetime, like uh, there's some super teams, like like last year's Astros team was fantastic. Uh, you could think about last year's Dodgers team before the injuries. Like th those, this is what this break. This team is going to win 105 games. Like I'm, they're not. They're going to win more than 100. They're going to win 105 to 110. It's because Ozzy's healthy. It's because Acuna is healthy, and it's because Marcelo Zuna is looking like an all-star player again. And when you add those three into a t into a team that already won 101 games last year. <laughs> With a full year of Spencer Strider and a full year of Michael Harris, and you got AJ Smith Shaver and maybe Michael Soroka coming back. I mean, it's just it's absurd. If Max Free can get healthy, I mean, I I know baseball, the most talented team doesn't always win. I just have a hard time believing anyone's beating this team in the playoffs if they can get Max Free back. Yeah, I mean, talk about the Reds were red hot coming into the series. And I know they were close games. They were so entertaining. What an awesome series. It was an emphatic series win. I mean, the Braves flexed their muscles, and I know there were some hiccups with the pitching and everything like that, but the offense had their back. It was an emphatic series win, and I loved the Reds fans. After game one, they extended their win streak, and that was an electric game. Uh, started, you know, doing the chop and the chant, you know, doing a little jab. Guys, this Braves team, we won five straight division titles. You guys are only a handful of games over 500. We're 20 something games over 500. We're not worried about a June series. And then we come out, win the series Saturday, Sunday. That's just who the Braves are. They just put their head down and work. I love this team. 
uh, you know, if you're listening and you're not into baseball, I suggest that there's there's never been a better time to join Braves country. We are in the good old days. We're gonna look. We're gonna look back in ten years, fifteen years, and be like, "Damn, those were some fun." Braves teams. And we're in it right now. These are the golden years. We're in the 90s again. The 2020s are the 90s again. We're here. And you said it. There are no holes in the lineup. Michael Harris and Orlando Arcia are the weakest links. And when you're setting the table for Ronald Acuna Jr., you're gonna get you're gonna get pitched to, and now Michael Harris is playing like that rookie of the year that we saw last year. I mean, you can't say enough about these guys. It, it, they love playing with each other. They're having a ton of fun. They're awesome to watch. They're by far the most fun team to watch. We hit bombs. That's what baseball is all about. For me, you know, I'm not this analytics guy. You know, the dink and dunk. I like bombs, and we hit them. Yeah, talk about Matt Olson. I can't say it enough. And I know I give you a lot of crap about the Matt Olson thing. And I do want to just say and defend you for a second. I was going to tweet at some people. I just I just let it alone. But I just wanted to say, uh, yeah, it, you're not anti-Matt Olson. Though you did say it was the worst move in franchise history, I think I can say it for you. It's more about letting a first ballot Hall of Famer walk out of the door. It's not about who came in the door after him. It's more about Freddie Freeman than it is Matt Olson. With that being said, Matt Olson deserves some recognition in the MVP conversation. The guy's on pace for what, 50 something home runs? I mean, the guy is yeah, just unreal. Yeah, I mean, the guy's unreal. I know Ronald Acuna Jr. is, um, you know, he's not going to run away with it because the kid in Arizona is just unbelievable as well. Uh, and he, he's going to put up 30 60 without a doubt, which has never been done before. But Matt Olson deserves some love in that conversation, undoubtedly. Yeah, I mean, the problem is you get you get too analytics based in these conversations and things are just like, oh, well, his war is not as good as blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, there's sometimes I, war is a great stat. But but sometimes I, I think, you know, if a guy's hitting 55 homers, like doing stuff like that, like yeah. you got he, he needs to be in the conversation. We'll see if Matt Olson can hit 55. Homers, I, saw, but. I saw somebody say, you know, there it's never been done before. There's only been that it was like 50 home runs, 100 RBIs a hundred walks and like a hundred runs or something along those lines. And Matt Olson is on uh pace to eclipse those marks. I also want to give a quick shout out. Travis Darno just comes back. Sean Murphy gets injured. The guy just picks up where he left off on his all-star campaign from last year. Sean Murphy then comes back from his little injury stint and has a big game. I mean, the Braves, we are spoiled right now. I love it. I mean, I just, we're the best team in baseball. I don't want to discredit what the Rays are doing because it is overly impressive what they're doing with an $80 million payroll. It's unbelievable. I don't know how they do it. The most efficient team in baseball by a payroll uh, standard, but uh, nobody can match the Braves. When when this all-star break comes or when the trade deadline comes, and, and I guarantee you we talked about it at uh, on last week's show, Friday, the MLB uh, trade deadline primer way too early. Please go check it out if you haven't. We talked about a bunch of stuff, Sports Talk ATL on YouTube. Please subscribe. Uh, and all of this information will also be on the site, sportstalkatl.com. When we add a high-powered arm to that bullpen, Max Free comes back. I'm not even going to, you know, guarantee you think about Kyle Wright. Just Max Freed and a high-powered bullpen arm. This It's scary hours for the rest of the league. It really is. Yeah, I mean, you just sticking with the the offense. I mean, you have you have a guy in, in Matt Olson that could hit fifty plus homers, set a franchise record for homers, which I actually predicted him to do last year. But hey, you're a year off sometimes. Um, Ronald Acuna could obviously challenge forty homers. Uh, Ozzy Albies looks like he could challenge forty. You could legitimately have three guys hit forty home runs on this team, which I don't know if that's ever been done. But uh, then you go move on even further. The guys that could hit thirty: Austin Riley, Sean Murphy. Um, Marcelo Zuna could all hit 30 home runs. Then after that, you're talking about 20. And like, listen, Arcia and Harris got injured and they're only at six. I still think Harris could hit 20. Um, Rosario is on pace for like 25. Um, so you could have seven guys in the lineup that hit 20 to 25 homers. And then you even talk about RC if he doesn't get injured, he he, he could approach 20, but at least 15. Um, and Travis Darno, like this guy might hit 15, 20 bombs, not even playing every day. So it's like, they're, it's just incredible. Like it's never been done before. Like the, what they're doing is historic and they're hitting bombs and they're stealing bases and they're, it, it's incredible. Coming up after the break, we're going to talk about the Hawks first round pick from third last Thursday night, Kobe Bufkin. <laughs> 